Welcome back, everybody. So I had the opportunity to play in the Sabrina 2, Sabrina Ionescu's follow-up to her first signature shoe, the Sabrina 1. And that was a shoe that was very popular amongst the NBA crowd, the WNBA crowd, and more than likely uh, all basketball players all across the country and more than likely all across the world. Um, but the big question is, can you follow up such a great shoe in the Sabrina 1 with the Sabrina 2, and can you improve upon that or do you fall into that sophomore slump and kind of take a step back? That's the question we're gonna to answer today. But before we get into this review, if you can like and subscribe and comment, it definitely helps the video get into the algorithm, get into people's feeds and things like that, and hopefully get a little bit more exposure. But without further ado, let's get into this review. Now, when it comes to the packaging for the Sabrina 2, they keep it pretty simple. There is a slight change from the Sabrina 1 to the Sabrina 2, um, and that really is just a change of color. So it goes from that beige color on the Sabrina 1 to the all black color on the Sabrina 2. You do have the Sabrina Ionescu logo on the top of the box. On the Sabrina 1, you had a um, little bit of a quote on the inside of the box. On the Sabrina 2, you don't have any of that, but Overall, the packaging and presentation is pretty straightforward and simple. Again, for a shoe that costs $130, you're not gonna really expect a whole lot in terms of presentation. Now, over on the design side, let's talk about that. Now, to say that the Sabrina 2 and the Kobe 5 resemble each other is a bit of an understatement. Um, you have a lot of design aesthetic that is found on the Sabrina 2 that kind of looks like they were kind of inspired from the Kobe 5. Um, for instance, the flywire cables on the Kobe 5 that are integrated into the upper, they're actually kind of like flywire panels on the medial and lateral sides, obviously helping with containment. On the toe box area, you actually have a toe box that has a little bit of a fuse uh, mud guard area, kind of obviously for containment, but they actually replaced the toe box and the medial and lateral sides uh, with mesh paneling, and that helps with um, weight and obviously breathability um, overall and obviously costs. Now, moving on to the back of the Sabrina 2, you actually have a heel counter that brings over the embroidery from the Sabrina 1, which I thought was a very nice premium touch for a shoe that didn't cost a whole lot of money. Um, but you have that uh, embroidery that is a little bit symbolic of what the Sabrina, Sabrina 1 meant, which was it was breaking barriers, it was kind of uh, breaking ground on what a signature shoe for a female athlete could mean uh, for basketball as a whole regardless of gender. And so the Sabrina 2 really is it, using that symbolism. Uh, you have what looks like a vertical swoosh is breaking through like um, breaking through ground or breaking through a ceiling and things like that. I may be reaching or I may be reading too much into it, but just from the outset looking at that, that's what immediately kind of stands out to me is that it's supposed to mean that and it's a part of the storytelling element of the Sabrina 2. Now, on the heel counter area, you have a little bit of a lip, similar to what you see on the GT Cut 3. On one side, it says anyone, and on the other side, it says anywhere. You also have uh, Sabrina Ionescu's signature on the outrigger area. You have the Zoom Air um, debossed into the Cushlon 3.0 foam and then overall you have the Sabrina iridescent logo on the tongue a la Kobe 5. Then you have the iridescent swoosh on the lateral side and then you have the vertical swoosh like I said earlier on the medial side um, around the heel area again around that embroidery pattern. Now when we talk about the similarities between the Sabrina 2 and the Kobe 5, um, the materials part is where they start to kind of diverge a little bit. Obviously the Kobe 5 is using premium materials, it uses zoom in the forefoot, zoom in the heel, and carbon fiber. On the Sabrina 2, it's going with a Cushlon 3.0 cushioning setup, but zoom air in the forefoot. Um, but the upper itself doesn't necessarily feature any raw materials whatsoever. And in fact, it replaces what you see on the Kobe 5 in terms of the paneling. Uh, it's replacing it with a mesh, mesh toe box, mesh lateral and medial sides, which makes it a lightweight shoe, makes it breathable, but also obviously reduces cost in general. Um, this particular shoe doesn't have a shank plate or any kind of plastic torsion plate. Um, what it does have is that Cushlon 3.0 kind of sitting in the middle. So obviously you don't have those premium touches that you have on the Kobe 5 on the Sabrina 2. And that's for obvious reasons. 
Now, when we talk about the materials, obviously we start talking about the weight of the shoe. Um, the Sabrina 2 is by all accounts, the lightest shoe I have tested this year, 2024. In a size 12 and a half men's and a 14 women, it comes in weighing 14.1 ounces or 400 grams total. And in playing in the shoe, in my experiences, the shoe was incredibly light. It played incredibly light. And it was something I definitely noticed. And it didn't come at the expense of anything else or any other aspect of the shoe, which was a fantastic feat by Nike and their engineering team is by you know, keeping the shoe as light as possible but while also not compromising in any other aspect of the Sabrina 2. Now, when it comes to the fit, this is a bit of a tricky situation for me because I played in the Sabrina 1 and I went with my true size 12 in men's and then obviously 13 and a half in women's and it just absolutely destroyed my feet and that was more so my fault. It wasn't necessarily anything, anything to do with the shoe itself. It's just the sizing um, overall and for me, in my experiences, uh, women's sizing, sizing tends to go a little bit long and a little bit on the narrow side. Uh, for me, again, going true to size, it, they, they killed my feet and I didn't think I could give it a fair review. Moving to the Sabrina 2 though, I decided let me just go with a half size up. So I went with a 12 and a half men's and a 14 women and they fit practically perfect. I can't say it any better than that. They were a perfect fitting shoe and very reminiscent of how Kobe fits my foot with a 12 and a half. And the problem with a 12 and a half though, uh, especially for a popular shoe like a Kobe, is that they're almost impossible to get at retail. But either way, um, if I'm making a recommendation in terms of sizing, I'm definitely recommending if you have wide feet, go a half size up. So um, if you're a narrow to normal size foot, I would definitely recommend going true to size. But again, if you're a wide footer, go a half size up. Like I said, I usually go with a size 12. Um, for this shoe, I went with a 12 and a half men's, 14 women, and they were fitting me very, very perfectly. Now, from a containment perspective, playing in these, um, they kept my feet securely on that footbed. I never had one issue with my foot slipping off the footbed, never had an issue where I had any heel slippage or anything like that. And I tied my shoes, normal tightness. I didn't have any circulation being cut off. Again, fit was perfect. And then containment was just practically perfect as well. Now, when it comes to the cushioning, the Sabrina One featured a Zoom and React setup. You had Zoom in the forefoot and you had a React carrier that actually went throughout the shoe in the midsole. On the Sabrina Two though, they actually get rid of that React foam and replace it with a Cushlon 3.0. And then you have that same Zoom unit in the forefoot. Now in practice in playing in the shoe, um, I didn't feel that Zoom unit in the forefoot the way I normally feel Zoom. And in talking to one of my friends, we were trying to just kind of theorize why I couldn't actually feel that bounce from the zoom. And our conclusion that we kind of came up with was maybe it's a bottom loaded unit. In reviewing the tech specs on the Nike site for the Sabrina 2, it is kind of specifically called out that the zoom unit is actually top loaded sitting right under the insole. So in theory, I should have felt that zoom unit. Um, the other theory I had maybe is that it is a thinner zoom unit overall. It's not specifically stated how thick that zoom unit is. Um, or it's just a low PSI zoom unit. But either way, the Cushlon 3.0 does provide a good deal of impact protection throughout the shoe. It is uh, acting as a carrier for the zoom unit. Uh, Cushlon 3.0 is a firmer, more stable cushioning system. Um, so it, again, you're getting a good deal of court feel while also getting a lot of impact protection and stability overall. Cushioning, in my opinion, was fantastic on the Sabrina 2. Traction. Let's talk about it. The traction on the Sabrina 2 was nothing short of fantastic. I generally don't give numeric value to anything that I've tested at this point. I just give my opinion. Um, for the Sabrina 2, I'm kind of compelled to give it a numeric uh, rating um, just because of how, um, how great it was overall on the court. If I'm giving it a rating at this point, I would give it a 10 out of 10. Um, it is one of the best tractions I've tested this year so far. And I've tested about, I don't know, nine or 10 different shoes this year. Um, but the traction on the Sabrina 2 was nothing short of fantastic. Um, it has a modified herringbone pattern on the forefoot and it has different types of herringbone with different spacing. And then on the heel area, you actually have what looks to be some type of a radial pattern. It isn't a true radial pattern because the traction nubs or the treads are broken up in the heel area. But again, it isn't that heel pattern or that radial pattern. So overall though, 
Again, in playing in this shoe, it gripped that floor incredibly well. Um, I never had to wipe the shoe. I never any, had any issues with slipping whatsoever. That in tandem with that incredible containment that the shoe provides, you have a shoe that just kind of provides a lot of protection in every possible way any shoe can actually provide. Now, when it comes to my recommendation for the Sabrina 2, it is an incredibly easy shoe to recommend just from a price perspective, $130, and then a performance perspective. The performance is probably one of the best shoes I have played in in 2024, with the only exception being that it competes directly with the Antikai 1 in terms of performance for me. The Antikai 1 obviously came in at $125, a budget shoe by every stretch of the imagination, but the Sabrina 2 coming in at $130 competes directly with it, and in terms of performance are neck and neck. Um, but the Sabrina 2 has some of the some of the best performance in every category, uh, fit and containment, traction, and cushioning. They all perform incredibly well. Um, I loved this shoe. It is a shoe that I plan on getting more pairs of. And if you have the ability to get them at retail, I highly recommend it. Um, if you have the ability to double up or triple up, that's something I would recommend as well. Um, it's no stretch of the imagination. You're going to see this shoe on the feet of many athletes all throughout the world as the months go on and more colorways become available. Um, it is that good of a shoe. But that would just about do it for this video. If there's anything I have missed or anything you would like to know about the Sabrina 2, please leave a comment. If you liked this video, like it. If you didn't like it, dislike it. But if you really, really liked it, hit that subscribe button. Thank you all for watching and you have a great day.